Hallelujah. In the past week, we've been talking about the subject or passage that contains the phrase, one thing. We've dealt so much, or in two occasions, we've dealt into that phrase. And our series title has been, This One Thing. We have discussed topics that Paul spoke about. David made a statement. Paul said, this one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching out to those things that are ahead. That if he can be successful, then he might, he has to forget about all things and look forward. David said, all that I wish for, my desire, is to be in the house of God. And that is what I seek. This subject has really taught me much. And I believe you are also learning out of this. It is my prayer that we will not only be hearers of the word, but we will be doers of it. God did not bring us together only just to gather, but God wants to direct us. And by his direction, we will become the vessels that he has created us to be. More also to have a very good relationship with him. Our discussion today is on this same phrase, this one thing, or this topic, this one thing. But today we are going to deal with a man that was born blind and was healed by Jesus. The scripture says that when this guy got healed by Jesus, he was interrogated by the people that were around. The religious leaders called him and they asked him so many questions. But the man did not present a well-prepared statement. Neither did he come up with a speech to speak to them. He also did not allow their questioning to intimidate him. But he simply gave a word or a phrase or a statement. They were questioning him about who healed him. They were questioning about whether he was born blind or not. They went and called the parents and asked the parents, was this boy born blind as we, we've been told? And the parents said to them that, listen, the guy is right there, just ask him. They came back to the man and said, listen, we want to know that if you were born blind and uh, you've been healed by Jesus because uh, this man is a sinner. From the angle where we stand and how we look at things, we belong to Moses and Moses has thought it so much and that what he does does not go according to the precepts that have been laid for us and he is a sinner. And also he did what he did did for you on on a Sabbath day and that even proves that he's a sinner because the Sabbath was meant to be holy and nothing needs to be done but Jesus did what he did on a Sabbath it talks a lot about that but the man stood and looked into their eyes In John chapter 9 verse 25. The man stood and looked into their eyes. And answered and said. Whether he is a sinner or not I do not know. Whether he is a sinner or not I don't know. And that is not what I care about. But one thing that I know. That though I was blind. Now I see. I don't care about what you think about this man. I don't care about what you know about this man. I don't care about what you consider him to be. But one thing, I don't need too many things to prove to me that what he did for me, he has changed my life. One thing that me personally, I know is that I was born blind, but now I see. And he went on to tell them that if you are saying he's a sinner, well, it's up to you. 
But I do know that God does not listen to the voices of sinners. But those that do what is right before God, he will listen to them. So if you consider him to be a sinner, I don't know and I don't care. But one thing I do know is that I was born blind and now I see. Like I said to you earlier, we've been dealing on this phrase, this one thing. And today's topic is one thing I know. One thing I know. What do you know? To know is to have a knowledge of a thing or of a person. If you have knowledge, information about somebody, information that you know are, are, are real. When you have information about a, a thing or someone, it, it, be, it makes you uh, um, much aware of what that person is or what that thing is. It is to be cognizant of a situation that you have come to. If you get electrocuted by a wire, no one will tell you that, or you wouldn't even stand there for somebody to tell you that that thing is not dangerous because you have tried it. You have an experience. You, you have been through it and you have concrete evidence that that thing is dangerous. So you know. There are so many people in Christ today who are not so firm, really grounded in God. They don't know what they have. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are doing and any wind blows them off. But this man said, one thing that I know, I was born blind. Now I see. What do you know? Um, there is a, there's a school. I don't even remember what this school is. Their motto is knowledge is power. It's one of the schools in Ghana. I don't know which one it is. Knowledge is power. Is it, is it my school in my big town? Probably. Knowledge is what? Power. And it is true. Knowledge is power. When you have an, the knowledge of something, you can stand and defend yourself. It is not just coming to church. We must know who we are. You must know who you are and what you have. You must know what Christ has done for you. You must know your relationship with Christ so that no wind or doctrine can come and throw you out. One thing that I know, one thing that I know, for this past few days, there's been so many information going on on the social network about, about a pastor that happened to kill her, uh, his, his wife. It, it, it is so sudden. But as the story keeps coming and keeps coming, there was something that happens to come in that I sat down and I questioned myself, where did this guy go off like that? Why? Because he started getting information from somewhere that does not go according to the plan of God. One thing that I know, people are not so much okay with what they have. This man knew that Christ has saved him. This man knew that Christ has touched him. This man knew what God has done for him. People were saying that Jesus, Jesus is a sinner. People were saying that Jesus is not right. Yes, they have tried according to what they knew from, from, from the Mosaic law. But this man said, I don't know about that Mosaic law. I don't know what you are talking about. I don't know whether he's a sinner. I don't know what he has. But one thing I don't know. This one thing that I know. I was born blind. And now I see. I was born blind and now I see. When you read the story, you realize that this man was even kicked out of the synagogue because he was holding on to his faith in Christ. And as he walked around there, not knowing where to go, grace found him. Jesus found him. And he began to speak to the man. Do you believe do you believe in the son of man? He said, I don't know who the son of man is. He says, the one that speaks to you is he. He said, yes, I do believe. And God took him. Not only did his eyes, physical eyes got open, but his spiritual eyes also got open. Dr. Steve Lavell, um, one of the men, great men of God in this city, wrote a book 
And in the book, he made a statement. He said, knowing will always eliminate our ignorance. When you know something so well, it will eliminate your ignorance. And that is the reason we must sure, we must surely read the scriptures, get into it and to know what God wants from us. He says it will also remove our limitations. When you know something in God, it will remove your limitations. It will help you. It will enable us to move forward in life. It will also awaken all our understanding of a situation. When we come to a point where we don't understand what it is, our knowledge about the situation will help us out. What do you know? What do you know? Remember what God said to Joshua. This book of the Lord you should meditate day in and day out. That you will make your way prosperous. Why? Because if you are able to know what is in the scriptures, it will direct your path. It will put you on the right path where God wants you to be. It will make you who God wants you to become. And so we must daily get ourselves into the word. We must get ourselves into the word. We must get to know what God says who we are. You must get to know what God says who you are. Praise the Lord. One thing that I know, when knowledge is acquired, we gain strength or confidence to, to stand against people that may question us. When we are able to acquire knowledge, which we must, especially knowledge in the word of God, it will strengthen us. When a person encounters Jesus, you will never be again, the same again. Why? Because he will give you knowledge. He will change your story. The Lord will always bless us. When his miraculous hand comes upon our lives. Have you ever noticed this? That sometimes when you know that God has done a miracle in your life. Then your, then your mind begins to question the same miracle that you've had. You prayed or you've been prayed for and you know that you are healed. Then as you go along, then you, you keep asking yourself, am I healed? Uh, did I really get healed? Did, did, uh, you see, the, the devil always wants to put in something to derail you from what you know. But we must hold on to what God has given to us. Amen. The enemy will always try to find means to crack or put a crack into the belief that we have in God. And when that is open, he then pushes himself in and messes everything that we have. He messes everything that we have. Hallelujah. Where is the God that helped you when you were in trouble? Where is the God that helped you when you came into a, a, a situation where you couldn't handle it? And he helped you and brought you out. I'm telling you tonight, if you really know him, if you really know this God, it is time for your faith to be rekindled so that you'll be able to stand and say to yourself, the same God who helped me yesterday has the power to do it again. First Samuel 17, 36. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. 37. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the power of the lion and from the power of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the, this Philistine. The God who helped me will help me in this situation too. I don't know about what you are facing now. But you have to shift your mind from that, that situation where it seems to be that God is not with you. Bring your mind to the point where your God is still God. It is the same God that has saved you. He is the same God that gave Jesus Christ to us. The Bible says that he that gave Christ to us, we will also through Christ give us all things. David said the same God. He would deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. 
And truly, when he stood before the Philistine, he won his battle. What do you know? Don't allow the devil to destroy your faith in God. I keep saying to you that God has not changed. The God of Abraham was the God of Isaac. The God of Isaac was the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob was the God of Joseph. The God of Joseph was the God of Manasseh. The God of the Israelites was the God or is the God whom we serve today. What he did for Isaac, what he did for Jacob, what he did for Abraham, what he did for the Israelites, the same God has the power to repeat himself. And I say to you that if you know that he's able to do it, if you know that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you think or ask, God will be on your side. What do you know? One thing that I know, that my God is able. One thing that I know, that my God is with me. One thing that I know, he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. One thing that I know, that when I'm in the waters, you'll be with me. One thing that I know, that by his stripes I am healed. One thing that I know, that he died on the cross to save me. One thing that I know, weeping may endure but for the night. And joy comes to in the morning. One thing that I know, that many will be the afflictions of the righteous. But God will deliver him out of them all. One thing that I know, that the Lord is my shepherd. And therefore I will not want. I shall not want. I will not care about anything. For he is with me at all times. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What do you know? What do you know? One thing. Don't let the enemy put cracks in your believing God. Don't allow the enemy to put cracks in your faith in God. Hold on to that faith. Hold on to that belief. Hold on to that information. Hold on to that knowledge. For there is a day coming that that same word, that same thing that you know is going to be your lifeline. There is a day coming that what you know will be your lifeline. The devil wants to destroy what you know and put in something that looks like. We are not talking about looks like. We are talking about Jesus, the risen Lord. Praise the Lord. One thing that I know, he stood before the Goliath and David, Goliath looked at him and began to laugh. Look at him, a young boy coming to attack me with bows, with, 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 with stones and strength. You don't know what you're talking about. You do know me. David looked at him and said, listen, man, you have these arrows and you have these balls and you have these ammunitions and you have all those things you have. But let me tell you one thing. There is one thing that I know. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm saying this not because of who I am, but because of who I believe. You come before me, David said. You come to me, 1 Samuel 17, 45. You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This is what I know. And truly he won. The devil knows that you have the power to destroy him. He knows that you carry a great weapon. But what will make him defeat you is when you cling, you cling to his, his unbelief and his lies and his things that look a lie and he, he, he's the, that, that form of fear and makes you throw away your faith. I speak to somebody today that the God whom you know is able to save you. Don't throw away your belief for that is your lifeline. You don't need much. You need one thing. One thing. One thing. One thing. Daniel said, 
Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flatly. Daniel 11, 32. But the people who know their God, the people who know their God, they shall be strong. The people who know their God, they shall be strong. The people who know their God, they shall be strong. Because they know that their God is able to do much. They know that what they can do is not by them, but by their God. For the people who know their God, they shall be strong. Not only will they be strong, but they will carry out great exploits. They will do great things. David is an example. Elijah stood before Ahab and said in 1 Kings 17 verse 1, Don't let us do what they are doing. Let us them look at the faith we have in God. Let them know what we can do. Let them know what, who we have and who is with us. When Elijah made this statement, Ahab later got to know that yes, God of Israel is with him. Because it's so important that we must draw close to God by knowing him. Paul said, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings be made, conf be made conformable unto his death. What are you striving for? What are you striving for? That I will make dollars. That I will marry. That I will buy a car. That I will have, a ch I will have children. They are all good. But set your preferences right. For this man, he said, you may say whatever you want to say. But I will say to you, there is only one thing that I know. That I was born blind. Now I can see. There is a, an account proverb in my language that is explained. That even if you don't know how to cook, when the, the, the rice pot has black under it, all the, I, was, I don't know whether you call it the residue or whatever thing that comes under the, rice, under the rice pot. When that becomes black, then it means that the rice that you cooked was good. Praise the Lord. In the Chi language, they will say, Praise the Lord. When the, when, 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 I don't even know how to bring this in, in English. How do you call that thing? Not all the time. It's because you people have always been using rice cooker. Praise the Lord. That is it. My father used to say all that I know is spinach is green. And it's true. Spinach will never be yellow. So that is what I know. You can never come to me and tell me that spinach is brown. It is green. What do you know? The information you know about Christ will be your lifeline one day. Peter said, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. May God bless you. Ah, this God whom I know this God who is with us. Today I pray that he will bless you. I pray that God will open your eyes. That that little word that you know from God. Hold on to it. That word that you have come across in the scriptures. Hold on to it. Don't let it leave you. That word that you know about God. Hold on to it. That word that you know about who you are. Hold on to it. For it will be a lifeline. A day to come. I pray that the power of God will rest upon you. I pray that favor 
will reach your quarters. I pray that grace will find you. May the Lord bless you. If you are listening to us out there and you don't know Christ, this is a great opportunity for you to receive him. For those that come to him, he would never let them go. His arms are always open unto them. The Bible says that he stands at the door knocking that if anyone will open the door, he will come in and dine with you. There is still room at the cross. I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come in your name, O Lord. Forgive me of my sins. I want to walk with you. I want to know more of you. Come into my life and make there your place. Today I surrender all my life unto you. That one day when you descend to pick up your children, I'll be found by you. I bless you. I thank you. I give you all glory for what you've done for me. In Jesus' name. And now I pray that God's strength will come upon your life. May the Lord add to that which he has given to you spiritually a physical manifestation, a proof that yes, he has a connection with you. Today, I lift you up before God and I ask that my God will favor you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You mean more to us at Praise Palace than you may ever know. We appreciate you and we thank our friends and partners for making this ministry possible. Together, we are presenting the gospel to the world. Please contact us or visit praisepalace.org today to share your prayer request, find out more about our resources, check out our upcoming events, and stay connected as we share the love of Christ around the globe.